Welcome back to IndustryBroadcast.com. That's right, you guessed it for audio article number 80. Today's audio article is written by Joshua Dolman, a programmer by nature that got his big break in the industry back in 2006 when he joined on Garage Games as an intern. Shortly thereafter, he was offered a full-time job with Garage Games twice and eventually came on as a producer where he helped play a vital role in filling up the garage game store with over 50 games, helping many indies get published that otherwise would not have. With over two years of garage games experience under his belt, Joshua decided to leave the continent and take a position in South Africa with a company called Luma Arcade. This represented an opportunity to get back to making games, something that excites Josh more than nearly everything else in this world. As well as working with Luma, Josh also runs an indie studio that can be found at www.redthumbgames.com. This is where he's released such blockbuster indie titles as Shelled, Shelled Online, and Dragon Hatchery. He also runs a casual indie blog, coincidentally, at casualindie.com. But let's get to the audio article, number 80, titled How to Pitch Your Game, written by the one and only Joshua Dolman and read aloud by, you guessed it, Ryan Wienko on the 26th of February, 2009. It was one year ago that Garage Games introduced the Affiliated Developer Program. In that year, as a producer, I've reviewed countless video game pitches from good all the way to awful. I am marking the one-year occasion by authoring this article to offer some broad tips that will help independent game developers successfully pitch themselves or their game to any publisher without boring the publisher or losing their interest. The range of pitches that I've reviewed is huge. From literally two-word emails, you like, followed by an attached movie, to 30-page design documents complete with appendix detailing every mouse click. Everything from casual games to World of Warcraft clones from someone who's never shipped a game requesting a third of a million dollars to start their own business to experience developers delivering sober proposals. From that stack, here's my advice. Research the publisher. My first tip is true for any publishing field, be it books or films, and that's do your homework. If the publisher is PopCap, don't pitch them the next Half-Life. If the only casual game a company has ever made is Puzzle Poker, chances are they aren't big on funding Match 3 clones. Target publishers who are in your genre, and you will have a greater response rate. Look at the publisher's portfolio to get a feel for what they are interested in seeing. If you don't, you're wasting their time as well as your own. That is time that you could be spending targeting more likely publishers. A picture is worth a thousand words. If your pitch contains only text, it will be scanned over and crucial details may be missed. And while it does take time to process words, visual scenes are processed quite quickly by the brain, and game industry people, especially creatives, are visual communicators. A quickly mocked up in-game screen will tell more about the game than a page worth of text. The more clearly you can communicate your idea, the better it can be weighed, and the more likely it will be accepted at a minimum, as something of interest. A picture eggs the viewer on. It says, imagine this scene with real art and brought to life. It captures the viewer's imagination in ways that words cannot. Photoshop mock-up, programmer art, MS Paint, it doesn't matter. Any sketch is better than none. If you have a real concept artist and include pre-production art in the pitch, it is that much stronger and it shows that you put that much more thought into all aspects of the pitch. No can happen in one sentence. Present your high-level concept first, with one sentence. If the high concept is accepted, the publisher will continue to read for greater detail. If the high concept is rejected, the publisher stops right there, and any work you did on further details for the pitch are irrelevant. For example, your high-level concept may be a genre the publisher does not work with, may be something considered too risky, an MMO for example, or the publisher may already have a title in the works that is too similar to consider a second. Don't assume or expect the publisher to read the whole pitch. It can end in that first sentence, which brings us straight to the next point. Have many things to pitch. 
don't put all of your eggs in one basket. If the publisher rejects one pitch, it doesn't mean the end of the relationship. If you have more pitches up your sleeve, that is, be prepared to pitch multiple and diverse projects, though not all across the board and too diverse, that is. I heard one developer whose game a publisher loved pitched an idea for his next game, which the publisher wasn't impressed with and thought, maybe this developer doesn't know as much about design as we thought he did. Luckily, he had a backup, which was an instant hit, making the publisher forget all about the first weak pitch. One game was RPG-like, the other arcade-like. The second pitch was not a trivial variation of the first, but it wasn't as widely divergent as an MMO slash match 3 either. By that token, don't have so many games to pitch that you're just firing in the dark and seeing what sticks. Anyone can do that, and it shows no commitment on your part. Be professional. Your pitch should be professional in presentation, not informal. You are, after all, formally requesting publisher services and or funding. A conversational style is indirect and meandering. If you want to be seriously considered, be serious. Be passionate about what you pitch. This is harder with paper pitches than in-person ones. But despite being professional in a pitch, passion comes through nonetheless. It's simple. If a developer is passionate about a project, they are more likely to make sure that they create a fantastic product and follow through on deadlines. If they seem ambivalent, then guess what? So will the publisher be, which all but guarantees a big fat no. Know what you are making. Know what your core game concept is. Know what elements support that. Know your design inside and out. Publishers will not pay you to experiment on a prototype. Granted, your design may change through the course of development, but you are not pitching a direction. You are pitching a specific game. Make sure that you know what that is and can communicate it simply and clearly. Be able to answer why you are making the game that you are beyond just, I think I will like it. No budgets. I've talked to developers who, upon being asked what a budget is for a game they pitched, said they had no idea and offered nothing further. I've seen budgets whose only line item is the game, with the total amount listed and no further details. Make sure you know what you are asking payments for. How much is needed for art, for code, for administrative overhead? Are you familiar with the contracting costs for these things? Do you have ballparks on man hours required for various features? How much can be shaved off your budget by cutting feature X or by adding feature X? As much of this should be known up front and not discovered later on. You can be greedy or stupid, but not both. I've heard this line a year ago, and it's true. If you have a great proposal, but are asking for too much money and too many deal points, no exclusivity, no rights to sequels, no alternative form of publishing, you can still be negotiated with. If you have a great proposal and at the right price, but are missing a big piece of the picture, neglecting customer service costs for an MMO, for example, or neglecting the true difficulty of implementing a certain feature, you are still potentially in business. But if you are both greedy and stupid, there is no reason for a publisher to work with you, no matter how great your game is. There are simply too many intelligent, humble, capable developers out there willing to work in your place. This industry has a surplus of people wanting to be in it, not a shortage. Avoid these pitfalls. Be almost greedy. I am showing my colors as a developer and not a publisher here, but it's good advice and bears passing along. It's true not just for video games, but for any business deal. We have a tendency to shortchange ourselves or to expect the execution to be perfect with no bumps or fail to account for the unforeseeable. Rule of thumb, ask for slightly more than you're comfortable with. At the same time, be prepared for slightly less than you're comfortable with. Somewhere in that zone, your game will be made. License and registration, please. In a publisher's eyes, the team that you have is as important as the game or the concept itself. Ask yourself these questions and be prepared to answer them. What have you shipped? What is your industry experience? What contract work have you successfully completed? Be honest with yourself. Now ask... Do these answers to these questions match up with what you're proposing and asking for? Make sure they do. 
publishers do not just see the project, but they see the faces behind it. In sales, it is cheaper to get repeat customers than find new ones. Publishing is no different. It is more effective to work with existing partners than identify and orient new ones. More often than not, publishers are looking for long-term partners to trust. If all you see is the one game, and all you're showing us is the one game, and no value of the team behind it, your vision is not broad enough. When is it shipping? Have a timeline and associated cost for dates. Milestones can be feature-based, prototype, campaign, multiplayer, final art, and bugs, or stage-based, alpha, beta, RC, gold, or both. There is no absolute standard except that without this information, the publisher is going to be left wondering how long your project will take. Moreover, the publisher needs to know how much you need at each of these stages so that you can project your internal budget accordingly. You're not going to get paid entirely up front or entirely upon completion, so set your needs and expectations here and be ready to negotiate. Competitors Capably discuss your game's position in the marketplace. More is better than not enough. How have other games in the genre performed? What is the last succeeding similar product? How is your game similar to and unique from competing products? Who are your competitors and why is your game better? These are all of the important questions to answer. A pitch that is weak, that deeply understands its competitors, is as likely to succeed as a pitch that is strong, that dismisses or misses the mark on its competitors. Showing that you know who else has your same idea, and who has executed well on it, and also who has failed, tells the publisher that you are much more likely to succeed yourself. It shows that you deeply understand your genre and have done your homework. Now with 8-way joystick and second button. Platform matters. If it's an arcade cabinet game, how will you leverage that? If it's a cell phone game or a web game or a LAN party game, how will you leverage those? Miss this and nobody will notice, but include it and get it right and it's that much more firepower to ignite the flame of a go. It's for hardcore gamers and my little sister. Know who your target customer is. Everyone or people who like raising games does nothing but tell the publisher that you didn't do your homework or don't really understand the game industry. There is no one right answer for this and no one right way to do it, but it should be some blend of age, gender, hobby, lifestyle, game preference, and the range should be not too broad. 9 to 90 is your target is not really a target. You can't help but hit it. Find something to aim for, and then find ways to strengthen the pitch for that particular market. What you do, do that. Stay within your limits. A publisher is not going to pay you for an attempt at a never-before-seen feat just to see if you can do it. Where there is money, there is by necessity certainty. Staying within limits reduces the risk of failure for both parties. If you've never done network games, don't pitch a network racing game. If you've never worked with physics, don't pitch a game that relies on physics as a key component. To the point. Stay to the point. You do need to share the plan for how you will produce the game. You don't need to detail what source control methods and what team management techniques you will use. You do need to state clearly what the game content will be, but you don't need to share the plan for how you will run the details of your business and which HMO you will be choosing for your employees. Stay relevant to the publisher. If you need an affirmative pat on the back for the details of your other plans, get that from a fellow developer or a friend, not from a publisher. They have neither the time nor the interest. Business is business. Don't take personal or take things personally. The games industry is a business. The people reviewing your games are not there to make you feel good about yourself. They are there to further mutual and legitimize business. They are in that business because it satisfies personal interests that they have, creative, social, or whatever, but that does not make things personal. You will make friends and ideally business relationships blur into social relationships, but at the end of the day, and especially with a new potential partner, business is business. 
Don't ramble. Less is more. Publishers get dozens of pitches a day. The more text that you have, the less likely they will read it. If your killer feature is buried on page 28 in section 3, subsection B, they will never get to it. Make bulleted lists and summarize things until more detail is requested. Your first pitch should be three pages, an introduction letter, a one-page overview, and some mock-ups or concept art, ideally with a link to a demo, with an invitation to see more if they're interested. You may have all day to write up the most detailed proposal on the planet, but publishers do not have all day to read dozens of them, and they get only dozens a day, if they're lucky. I've heard of publishers that field hundreds a day. Tie-in. The more relevant you can be to the publisher's history, the better. Do your homework. For example, if they made a hit FPS, acknowledge it or try to tie your game with it. Like your game X, my game also has emphasis on team co-op, but don't go to absurd lengths. Like your game X, my game also has graphics. Yes, this is partly ego stroking, and yes, it does work, but it will only get you so far. Originality. Your pitch should be original. As soon as it's, it's a Metroid, but with X, most publishers will no longer look at what you're doing and will instead focus on who you are. Anyone can come up with Metroid, but with X, but only very talented teams that know what it's doing can pull it off. If the best you have is rip off an old game with some different features or to mash up some popular games, don't bother unless you've successfully done it before. The Orson Welles Syndrome Be flexible with your features. This isn't about the publisher trying to creatively control your project. They don't have the time or desire to do that. If a publisher is interested in your game but wants to scale up or down, react accordingly. If they don't like a certain feature and you're not married to it, let it go. Don't be too defensive or worried about the publisher designing your game for you until you actually feel like it's happening. Asking to drop a certain feature or set is not a slippery slope and is common practice. This does not mean the publisher is designing your game. I am error. Don't try to impress the publisher with your knowledge of games or gaming history. It is irrelevant to the pitch. If you have a good pitch or idea, your knowledge of games will be self-evident. Who, what, where, when, how, and why. Make sure to go back and ask yourself if you covered all of the basics, the who, what, where, when, how, and why. Who are you making the game for? Who will it be working on? What is the game itself? Where will it live? On what platform is it ideal for? Certain platforms cater better to certain markets than others. PC strategy, for example. When can you start? How long will it take? What are your milestones? How will you develop your game? And what tools and tech? And with what team, in-house or contractors? And why do you believe the game will be a success and is worth looking at, without that being a three-page impassioned essay about how you've been playing games since you were five and no everything about them. Let me play. A playable prototype or demo is golden. No graphics, no sound, no building out the game, just core game proof of concept. A pitch with pictures will get ten times further than a pitch without. A pitch with a prototype will get a hundred times further than a pitch without. Don't apologize for the demo. They've heard, this isn't the final game art or gameplay, as many times as I've heard, please excuse the mess walking into a perfectly nice home. If the pitch is rejected, if you're resubmitting it with a playable demo, it could be reconsidered. Many publishers will not accept unsolicited pitches without a playable demo. Mess up. You'll make mistakes and it's okay. If you think these people in the industry that know everything and never make mistakes, well, then you're wrong. You don't need to be that person because that person doesn't exist. If the publisher raises an issue that you hadn't yet considered, be front. The publisher is smarter than that. Fess up to it and tell them that you'll discuss it with your team and follow up. Then actually do that. Especially the follow-up part. Be humble. 
This is by no means a step-by-step -step guide on how to pitch. This is general advice for studios or individuals of all sizes, professional or not, on how to pitch to publishers, solicited or not. This concludes audio article number 80. Once again, written by Joshua Dahlman, whose casual indie blog can be found at, you guessed it, casualindie.com. As in the past 80 articles, we recommend that you check back frequently with industrybroadcast.com as we do our oh-so-very-best to update the site on a regular basis, bringing the collective insight of the gaming industry to your ears.